Rob Walters, your Oxford guide, brings you the remarkable story of three generations of an Indian family of raw descent. Their family name is Ali Khan Patordi, and their tale could be entitled Two Cricketers and a Bollywood Film Star. That would be remarkable in itself, but it's their connection to Oxford which brings them to Rob's Oxford Channel. And that too is remarkable. In fact, each of them attended the very same college during their student days at Oxford University. All three Ali Khans, Iftikhar, Mansoor and Soha, are household names in India, but they may not be so famous elsewhere, so I'll provide a little background. Patrodi was one of the many princely estates in India prior to independence and its leader was titled the Nawab. Established in 1806, it was quite small and located about 70 kilometers south of Delhi. In 1948, it was subsumed into the Indian nation, but the title of Nawab lives on. Despite the state's diminutive size, the Patordis were rich and are rich to this day. Patordi Palace is their ancestral home. In colonial days, only rich Indians could send their children to an English university, and for the seventh Nawab, Oxford would have been the obvious destination for his son, Iftikhar. But then there was a choice of college. Why choose Balliol? Maybe because it's the second oldest college of the colleges, having been established in 1263. But more likely, because of its strong links with British India. Consider, for example, this man, Benjamin Jowett. He was a long-time master of the college during the late 19th century, when colonialism was at its peak. Here's a Balliol poem that personifies him. I recite it often on my tours. Here come I, my name is Jowett. There is no knowledge, but I know it. I am the master of this college. What I don't know is not knowledge. Jowett had strong connections with the Indian Institute at Oxford, which was the main training centre for Indian civil servants. He also had a large hand in creating the Indian Civil Service exam and in making Balliol a training ground for the young men who went on to administer the colony nearly 350 of them between 1850 and 1947. And there was a small but significant counterflow. 88 Indian students were educated at Balliol during that same period. And what's more, the British contingent included three men who became viceroys of the colony, including Curzon, who also earned a Balliol poem. My name is George Nathaniel Curzon. I am a most superior person. My cheeks are pink, my hair is sleek, and I dine at Blenheim once a week. Blenheim is of course a grand palace near to Oxford. Now let's explore this famous college at which all three of the Patordi family, grandfather, father and daughter spent their undergraduate years. Though Balliol was founded in the 13th century, there are no buildings remaining from that time. What we see here is the 19th century frontage onto Broad Street, which traced the northern perimeter wall of medieval Oxford. It is an imposing building. In common with the other colleges, this is where the students eat, sleep, play, pray, and have their famous tutorials. Let's have a wander around. Apart from a few ugly buildings, which I will not show you, this is all pretty much as the three Indian undergraduates would have seen it. Passing through the main doorway and the porter's lodge, we enter the front quad, which gives a good view of the red striped chapel with part of the college library to the left of it. Chapel attendance was compulsory right up until 1878, as was membership of the Church of England. 
Beyond this, the much larger garden quad leads up to the elevated dining hall with the college bar beneath it. Let's venture inside where we can see a typical layout for an Oxford college with the high table at the far end and student seating in long rows. The walls are crowded with portraits and to the left of the high table there is one of that fount of knowledge, Benjamin Jowett. All three Patrodis would have had many meals here and possibly hankered after the spicier food of India. Here's a view from the dining hall entrance over Garden Quad. Student accommodation is to the right and clearly this is pictured in winter. Soha Ali Khan complained bitterly of the cold here, claiming that her best friend was an electric heater. In addition to the three Patordis, many people have achieved fame after their stay at Balliol College. The list embraces four Prime Ministers of the UK, including the present one. Also, many writers, scientists and, and historians. Matriculation, the ceremony of joining the University of Oxford as a student, takes place at the Sheldonian Theatre. And you can explore this fascinating building in more detail elsewhere on my Rob's Oxford channel. The grandfather of the family, Iftikhar, matriculated here in 1927. And though the subject he studied is not recorded, I have ascertained that his two tutors were both historians. However, there is no record of a degree being awarded, and this is not as rare as one might suppose. Some of the richer undergraduates of Oxford attended for the experience rather than any academic achievement. In fact, a long-standing Oxford University student newspaper called the Cherwell or Charwell quipped that you should leave Oxford with, I quote, a first, a blue, or a spouse. A blue is an award for achievement in sport, which includes a successful competition with Cambridge. And it is sport, especially cricket, which underlines Iftikhar's achievements during his stay in Oxford. And it is through cricket that he acquired his blue. Perhaps his greatest achievement was a score of 238 not out in the 1931 Oxbridge University match easily breaking Cambridge's record in that match of 201 runs achieved by Alan Ratcliffe. At Oxford University, cricket is played in the beautiful University Parks, pictured here adjacent to the splendid pavilion designed by T.G. Jackson. If Tikar's son, Mansur, often known as Tiger, played there many times, he matriculated in 1960 and studied French and Arabic, though in common with his father there is no record of him being awarded a degree. By 1961 he had become the captain of the university cricket team, but then suffered a disastrous injury in a car crash which happened while travelling back from a match against Sussex. He sustained a serious injury to his right eye, yet after one year's absence he was back and leading the university's team once more. Years later, when his daughter, Soha, told Mansur that she wished to apply for a place at Balliol, he told her that was not possible. The college was for men only. She then explained that women had been admitted since 1979, and she did indeed apply and matriculated in 1996 to study modern history at her father's old college. Undistracted by the cricket field, she worked hard and was the first in her family to graduate at the Sheldonian Theatre. She would have had to dress as these students are dressed, in traditional costume, and at the last moment was shocked to find that she was without the compulsory black stockings. Fortunately, her father came to the rescue. He lent her his black socks instead. Well done, Tiger! Her tutor was the renowned historian 
Professor Martin Conway. He told me that, I quote, Soha was a great student to teach, who responded very well, not just to tutorials, but to the whole experience of being a student at Oxford. She knew she wanted to learn and wanted always to move forward. Following their years at Oxford, both father and son continued their sparkling cricket careers, playing for and against England. And it is a tribute to them that the winning team in the England versus India Test Series is awarded the Patodi Trophy. Besides cricket, Iftikhar also played the sitar, and his son added to the family fame by marrying Sharmila Tagore the famed Bollywood actress and the great grandniece of Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore. After retiring from his favourite sport, Mansoor became involved in journalism and television. Let's pay a little more attention to Soha, since she is THE Oxford graduate of the family. She followed her Oxford degree by taking a Master's in International Relations at the London School of Economics, followed by a short period as a financial advisor with Citigroup in Mumbai. But this was not for her. Bollywood called and she followed her famous mother and elder brother Saif Ali Khan into the world of movies. She reckons her most successful film is the 2006 Rang de Besanti. I always believed there were two kinds of men in this world. Men who go to their deaths screaming, and men who go to their deaths in silence. And then I met the third kind. Boys, no older than 23, fighting the Empire, okay? Yeah, you guys are perfect. <laughs> Hello, Hello. 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 Though this trailer may not be particularly moving, the movie certainly is. It must be watched all the way through and covers many issues from the cruelty of colonialism through the shallowness of modern youth to government corruption. Soha has appeared in some 30 films and has published an autobiography modestly titled The Perils of Being Moderately Famous. And there you have it. Two famous cricketers and a Bollywood film star, all from India, all from the same family. Of course, there are many famous people from the Indian subcontinent who have studied at Oxford, and I've covered many of them in my book, Stars of South Asia, but none of them have had three generations at the same college, Balliol College. Plenty more videos on my Rob's Oxford channel, so if you've not subscribed, please do so and hit that notification button so you will be told when a new video comes out. Bye bye.